Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We actually have a bevy of stories to get to today. Uh, let me see, we got Mario Strikers updates. We got Platinum Games likely making a bunch of games for Nintendo moving forward outside of the usual, you know, Wonderful 101, Bayonetta. Uh, we got some updates, unfortunate updates on eShop. That's uh, never good. Also, by the way, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 actually had a really, really big update today. And nobody seems to be talking about it, so we're going to talk about it here because Xenoblade Chronicles 3 literally comes out next week. Can you guys believe we're like a little bit over a week? Oh, we're also three days away from Live Alive, so let's not forget about that as well. Now, editor, cue the intro. That's right, folks. We brought back that intro. Uh, if you guys are really loving this content, loving this news, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. I actually have a brand new giveaway going on uh, down in the description and in the pinned comment as well because of the graciousness of Grid Studio. Uh, I'm going to be actually making a video on one of their products soon, but what I want to actually show you is what we're going to give, be giving away because of them, and that is this beauty, and what you can see here is the Grid Game Boy, and what this is is actually a decommissioned, no longer working Game Boy put into an art piece like this that you can actually hang on your wall, and you see they got Tetris in the background here, and they got all the different components of it taken apart with associated descriptions, uh, even all the way down to obviously the chip level here. So you can get a good look at some good old childhood memories, or maybe you just want some retro goodness in your heart. You can see this has a value of $269.99. It's actually normally $300. It is 30 bucks off. Obviously you can go buy one if you want, or you can just go to the link down in the pinned comment or the description uh, to enter. I only really ask that people are subscribed to the channel. Uh, that's really the big one. There's going to be other ways you can enter. You can follow our other, uh, you know, podcast channel and our Twitter accounts and and everything else to get some extra entries. Uh, and we'll probably be running this giveaway, I, I think, from now through August, because I'm not sure when my video is going to drop on this product specifically yet. Uh, I'll be able to show it to you in person here in a few days. But yeah, I, I figure we'll get a, a head start on this giveaway because it's, it's just such a cool item uh and yeah let's get right into the news so platinum games has decided to hire someone very very important to their company this person has 27 years experience working at nintendo and who are we talking about well we're getting this news over from silicon era and we're talking about uh platinum games is, has hired takayo yamane now i didn't know much about this person this is a picture of him uh, because i've been in nintendo of america and i only really see uh nintendo of japan employees like Shigeru Miyamoto and furukawa and owada and, and all that but then obviously nintendo of america employees so he's actually the former managing director of nintendo of europe as the company's new chief business officer. So he was hired as a business officer. In a teaser video for an upcoming interview with Famitsu Magazine, so there's an interview coming up, uh, Yamane noted that this, his joining would mark a significant change for Platinum Games. Yamane is a popular figure within the Japanese video game industry before joining Platinum Games. So this is literally what he was just doing before he was hired here. Yamane worked at Nintendo for over 27 years, holding various high-level positions during his tenure. This included serving as vice president of Nintendo of France until 2007, and then the managing director of sales at Nintendo of Europe for 18 years. When asked why he decided to join Platinum Games, you may say that he felt required in order for Hideki Kamiya and Atsushi Inaba, who just became the CEO, uh, to make their dreams become reality. In the teaser video, Yamane uh, gave Project GG, a Project Platinum Games originally teased in 2020, as an example. Furthermore, Yamane noted that the game was incredible, with Kamiya hinting at some sort of new direction for the company's creative projects. Back in February 2022, the company announced a change in structure with Anaba becoming the company's CEO. Since the change in leadership, the company has released Babylon's Fall, which did not do very well, but they did also announce the release date for Bayonetta 3. According to Yamane, his hiring will signify a new era for Platinum Games. And uh, yeah, we'll have the full interview here uh, tomorrow. Now, what I find interesting in looking at this is there's a lot of people speculating that this means like Nintendo's about to buy Platinum Games. I don't think that's the case. I know Platinum Games has actually openly talked about how they're open to the idea of companies presenting uh, purchasing proposals to them, but not that they would actually uh, take any of them. I honestly think this just means the relationship between Nintendo 
and this company are going to get even tighter. We do know that they want to take a different approach with games, and I think this is because they've had a hard time seeing success. Obviously, Babylon's Fall was an attempt at a new approach at making games for them that just totally bombed out. But then Bayonetta 3 has the potential here to go on to become the best-selling Bayonetta. We obviously know their last games, like Astral Chain for Nintendo Switch, also did really, really well. So I can see where this hire from Nintendo is actually just going to encourage Platinum Games to work even deeper and closer with the big end, not to be acquired by Nintendo, but to understand that their games actually perform best. The kind of games they like to make perform best when they're exclusively on Nintendo platforms or at least console exclusivity. I have no problem, of course, if these games are on all platforms, but I do think when you focus in on an individual platform, you tend to get better advertising and a better push by the platform holder, which helps a game perform. And I feel like we have seen this now where Platinum Games has attempted to to, to do multi-platform games several times to really not much success. Even the original Bayonetta didn't sell well enough for Sega to want to continue to fund it. So Nintendo swooped in, and that's why we've had Bayonetta 2 back on Wii U and now Bayonetta 3 on Switch. So I think this is just signifying a deeper partnership about to be happening. Obviously, the guy had 27 years working in high-level positions at Nintendo, clearly going to have a deep connection there, and his respect among uh, those in Japan is great. I, I don't foresee this being anything other than good news for Nintendo Switch and future Nintendo platforms in deepening that relationship. And obviously, Platinum Games is probably trying to find out how they can get to that next level instead of just being this company that sort of makes those middling games which really sucks because those middling games are sometimes better than these mega sellers that are out there but they just can't seem to break through and i bet you this hire is going to help with that so uh, i wish platinum games luck and i look forward to see what else you guys have coming down the pipeline obviously project gg but beyond that I want to see uh, what future things are happening after Bayonetta 3. Well, next up, we have an update on a very unfortunate story, and that is the closure, sort of, of the Nintendo eShop. Now, Nintendo actually announced this a while ago, uh, that for the Wii U and 3DS in particular, that we were going to not be able to purchase games uh, at some point in 2023, in March, and that we would not be able to add funds uh, to purchase games at some point this year. We didn't really have exact dates, just rough estimated months. And today, Nintendo has given us those exact dates. So let's take a look at the news right here. Getting this off of Nintendo Life, although it came from a Nintendo UK tweet. And you can see in the, in the UK tweet, it says uh, updates for the discontinuation of the eShop for Wii U and 3DS Family Systems as of August 29, 2022. You will no longer be able to add funds. And then as of March 27th, 2023, purchases will no longer be available. By the way, they're still going to be allowing you to download uh, games that you've already purchased. But as it says, they clarify you'll still be able to download those purchases from the eShop after the closure date for the foreseeable future, which is the good news. But that also means they're just going to randomly close it down. So on one hand, I do applaud Nintendo for actually being open and communicating this and not just leaving those dates floating out there and then a random day during those months things change. I also question what Nintendo is doing. If you remember, they took out the DS and Wii eShops entirely. They were just offline for months and then randomly came back online. And Nintendo still hasn't really commented on any of that. And at least they're being honest here. I Look, we know these, these shops are not going to be up forever. We know they're eventually going to go away. It, it, it's just it's always a little sad to think of what an end of an era truly is. And I, at this point in the digital world, I do think the true end of an era for a platform is when basically the shops are useless. It's already hit that point on Wii and DS, and it's now about to hit that point on Wii U and 3DS really next month. But let's say you add a bunch of funds. OK, then fine. Uh, March of next year. So it, it's going to be really unfortunate to see the end of those eras. I know the Wii U maybe isn't as big a surprise given its sales flop, and I know the 3DS is technically the worst selling Nintendo handheld. This is just numbers. Doesn't mean 3DS was horrible, just technically was the worst selling of their, of their handheld platforms. It's still kind of weird to see the end of an era. I know neither one of the platforms are even being made anymore or manufactured, but still, uh, game support was still happening and now that's going to be ending and that's just unfortunate. Next up, we have an update for Mario Strikers Battle League. Now, technically, this update came from here on Twitter, uh, but I'm just going to throw up the uh, the video here for you guys that you see here and uh, you guys can enjoy 
watching the new stuff. What do we basically learn? Well, they're going to be adding Daisy and Shy Guy as playable characters. But more than that, they're going to be adding a brand new uh, set of armor, a set of, you know, collectible things that you can unlock called the night set for everybody and then they're also going to be adding the desert rune as a playable stadium now they're adding this update in two days on 721 but more than that they also promised that they're going to be doing essentially similar updates two more times before the end of 2022 now what's interesting is the sort of debate that this has sparked online and i'm actually going to go over to super metal day 64 our good pal uh to see his response to this because it is quite interesting, and uh, I feel like this is a sentiment a lot of gamers have. So let's take a look. So it says Nintendo is basically saying that they're that they will finish development on Mario Strikers Battle League by the end of 2022. Enjoy the $60 beta until then. And I think that this is an, a, a very interesting sentiment that a lot of gamers are having about this update because it did feel a bit lacking in content. There were very few stadiums. They, they, they needed more playable characters. There wasn't a lot of armor to unlock. It, it's very weird to see that this game is going to be more content complete by the end of this year. There might even be more free updates next year, but by the after these next two updates, it'll feel like a more content complete game. It was also really weird they launched and then you had to wait nine days before clubs began when clubs was one of the big pushed selling features of the game. I know clubs are up now and they seem to be running fine. Online play seems to be fine. This, the, the single player was a little bit shallow. It's just a standard bracket uh, thing that you, you go through through cups. And, you know, yeah, the second time around, it's much more difficult uh, in the unlock armor sets. But it really wasn't a ton to unlock in the first place. So even though the difficulty ramped up, it's weird. Just like it's also weird that you can't do full 4v4 in your clubs. It's, you can, most you can go is 2v2 in the clubs where there's four characters and you kind of switch between them instead of there actually being 4v4. I, it's weird, but hey, Nintendo does weird things. I do think that this is probably the better of the Mario Sports releases. Uh, credit to Next Level Games for that, but at saying that, it's still not content complete. Free updates are cool, and I guess Splatoon popularized the idea of these free updates, but Splatoon also comes with a hell of a lot more content at launch. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Our last story deals with some updates to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That's right, that massive game coming out next week. And no, for once, we're not talking about the special edition and Nintendo Snafu with that. We're actually going to head over to Perfectly Nintendo for this information. And it says Xenoblade Chronicle 3, all the details, pictures, and videos from their official Twitter account. They've been, that's right, they've been drip feeding like crazy. So July 19th. This is the important one because this is the most recent stuff that we want to get into. Today's updates share some details and some footage about the night and day cycle. Enemies in fighting, unique monsters, tombstones, and Ashera, one of the heroes. While exploring Aeonios, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the clock never stops ticking. But if you want to switch from daytime to nighttime, you're free to change the time from the main menu. By the way, it seems that some monsters only show up at night. Also, you can enjoy the mini scenarios of Aeonios and see how they change depending on the time of day or night. During your journey, you will sometimes come across enemies that are fighting each other. You can decide to take part in the battle by picking up a side and doing so will net you a reward provided you win the battle. As for which side to pick, you need to pay attention to the rewards and how easy and hard it will be for you to achieve victory. When you defeat a unique monster, a tombstone appears at the spot where you felled it. If you examine it, you can choose to challenge that unique monster to a rematch. This might be a good way for you to gauge how much you've progressed since the last time you fought that particular enemy. Also, today's update introduced another hero, Ashera, voiced by M.A.O. in Japanese. Her class is Lone Exile, and despite being a defender, she fights rather aggressively and with her two-sided sword. She swings her weapon around and uses swift but powerful slashes to accumulate aggro. She can also counterattack when nearby allies are under attack. Ashera hails from Kieves, where she's known as a battle maniac who loves nothing more than to head on the battlefield and attack enemy colonies. Many fear her because of her callousness, for she is not afraid of death and cares little about the lives of her own. And then we got some new screenshots here, uh, which are popping up. Here we go. So you can see so this sort of day night cycle here. Uh, you can see another look at the world. Uh, you see, uh, look at some of the oceans and water here and some of the enemies here in there that you'll be able to, tra to traverse a little bit. Another enemy back here as well, snake. Uh, next up, we 
see uh, a battle sequence here, it looks like. Lots of battle stuff going on here. Probably a cutscene. Uh, we see <laughs> a nice facial expression. Uh, again, more battle stances and, and combat stuff going on here. Uh, again, looks like, you know, maybe another cutscene potentially here. And we're back to the beginning. Uh, next up, it says, finally, we get to see part of a cutscene during Ashera, where we can see how strong she looks, standing firm on the battlefield. Good thing she does not appear to be an enemy. Uh, and here's the video with all the clips from the update. And we'll we'll throw that up right now. So you guys take a look at that as we continue to talk about this game. So I find this to be really, really good stuff here. And Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is really shaping up to be, I think, something special for Nintendo and special for Monolith Soft. This is clearly the biggest undertaking that they have ever been a part of. And it is something I think that they are about to absolutely hit a home run with. I think that's what maybe excites me the most about this update for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the amount of detail they are putting into this game. Yes, it looks better than any prior Xenoblade game before, although some will still probably argue for Xenoblade Chronicles X's style from Wii U if you're a really hardcore fan. But I think that they have done everything they can to make sure that this is a masterpiece. And I really hope the sales and interest level in this game end up representing the level of effort put into this game. Monolith Soft has become one of the pillar development studios at Nintendo. They have multiple teams working on multiple games. We know they have a new IP in the works. They've had in the works for quite some time. We also know that they have separate individual teams that are helping out some of Nintendo's other franchises. As an example, they have a huge like development segment of their studio helping out the Breath of the Wild 2 team. We know this because that segment helped out the Breath of the Wild team, and they actually were hiring for that team specifically for Breath of the Wild 2 just a year ago. So we know that Monolith Soft has become a massive team and one of maybe the best purchases that Nintendo has ever made when they acquired them from Square Enix. So yeah, this ended up being a really good purchase for Nintendo, and we're going to start seeing the fruits of this. Obviously, Xenoblade Chronicles was really good. X, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I don't know if they're going to continue the Xenoblade Chronicles franchise or if they're going to decide to move on to something else. I have no idea. All I know is that Monolith Soft is incredible, and this game is shaping up to be really, really good, and it's going to be a game I don't think you're going to want to miss. If you've never tried out a JRPG, but have always been interested in trying one out, this is the one to dive into. After all, this is essentially nintendo's final fantasy and there's nothing wrong with that because you know square won't actually give us the real final fantasies that being said i want to thank all of you guys for tuning in i hope you really enjoyed this video and man oh man i can't wait to catch you in the next one